So for the past four weeks, we have been using this NVIDIA RTX 4090 from MSI. This is the Gaming X Trio version of the GPU. And here's the conclusion after a month of extensive use on this 1490. Is it worth it? What are some of the things as a video editor that you should be looking out for? You know, just a real review to the videographers. Let's cut through the marketing gaga and talk real world usage. So two things that you really need to kind of understand before we can start talking about it is my workflow and the actual PC setup. So for the PC setup, I am using the Ryzen 3950X, a 16 core processor from quite a few years ago, but it's still quite all right, but it is kind of feeling like I need an upgrade over there, which we're gonna talk about in a moment. I'm using 64 gigabytes of DDR4 3600 megahertz CL16, a Be Quiet 850 watt power supply, which is actually 80 plus titanium rated, so very, very high quality and efficient power supply. And then this, our beloved RTX 4090 from MSI. Now, the good thing about this card, first of all, is the power plugs, because some of the other cards come with four 8-pin PCIe connectors, and not all 850 watt power supplies have four 8-pin PCIe connectors. The good news is I was just able to plug it into the PC case, connect the adapter and the three 8-pin PCIe cables, and there we go, we're running the 4090. And I actually have benchmarked this compared to some of the other 4090s that use four pin PCIe cables. And to be honest, for creators, there's hardly any difference at all. You don't need to go for the more expensive MSI Supreme X, for example, you know, which has a bit higher clock speeds and four of the eight pin connectors. You don't really need that. So you can really save money and go with the 4080 Gaming X like this one here, if you want to save a little cash. And then secondly, my video editing workflow. So basically what we're doing is we're creating these videos here every day on the channel, like five days a week. And all of the videos are multi-cam edits. So we've got the front camera, that's 6K B-Raw. Then we've got the side cam, that's 4K, H.264, 10-bit, 422. That's 12-bit B-Raw, by the way. And then often we have a top camera as well, which is 4K, 8-bit, 420. So there's different codecs that are always going to be like in the multicam edit. And every single one of those cameras is actually recording log footage. So it's very flat image. And we're actually putting a color grade on top of it, which is very much supported on the GPU because we are using Adobe Premiere Pro for our video editing software. Now you can leave some nice comments in the comment section below. Why should I be switching to DaVinci Resolve? But right now we're still using Premiere Pro. And the Lumetri color kind of effect, color grading effect is actually GPU accelerated. So whenever we're playing back footage or editing it, uh, it's always color graded first, and then we're actually cutting and editing. So we're not cutting a log footage that isn't color graded. We're always looking at the color grading, color graded footage. I know this is not the most efficient, but this is just a nicer way of editing. We have seen no problem with this graphics card like at all. We also use a ton of like text overlay and um, some video effects like you know lower effects like links in the description if you want to check this graphics card out like you can see this blue things circling there then some other like after effects templates kind of things that have been exported as motion graphics we're putting them on top of video so here and there i'd say it's fairly complex timeline what we're doing b-roll on top of it so sometimes there's like four or five layers of videos all color graded on top of each other plus text and other things so it can get caught quite complicated. So number one thing I want to talk about is the VRAM. So previously I was using an RTX 3070 which has 8 gigabytes of VRAM and we found that quite often our timeline is just lagging and when we pause it it just takes forever to load and unload it. And then when I used the uh, hardware Info64 very quickly I realized that our VRAM or video memory is actually a capped or bottlenecked and we're using more than eight gigabytes and you know the program hasn't got enough VRAM to actually play all the video back. If you want to do that for your workflow and you want to know if you are have been actually bottlenecked by the VRAM then just download Hardware Info 64, it's a free program, just let it run while you're editing, and then after your, you know, full days of editing, you can see how much of the VRAM where you, you know, peaked at, so you can see if you were capped by it or bottlenecked by it. But in our case, we saw a massive bottleneck in the eight gigabytes of VRAM, 
and the 24 gigabyte is actually very 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 good for us and even if you're looking at the 4080 which is 16 gigabytes as you can see on one of the screenshots here of the hardware 64 you can see that we were actually using over 16 gigabytes of vram at some point capping over that so even the rtx 4080 would have been kind of bottlenecked with that but this 24 gigabytes is really really good that we really saw like a benefit of that 24 gigabytes now this is not the only nvidia card that has 24 gigabytes of vram there are much cheaper versions out there but we're going to talk about that in the conclusion if you want to save some cash but get more vram second of all temperatures you might have seen some of the um, you know onlines and rumors that this card is 450 watts goodness me that's going to consume a lot of power as you can see again from the screenshot of the um, hardware info we didn't use a ton of power like at all it idles at very good temperatures and wattages so you don't actually need to worry about the temperatures the cars are very very well cooled even at 100 percent utilization you can check out the 4090 review the card is very very well cooled and that's why it's so big the 450 watt you don't need to worry about that at all the four nanometer node from tsmc is actually making a big impact on the nvidia cards there a ton of power but actually still efficient so we saw absolutely zero problem with the actual temperatures or wattages inside the case like sometimes the rtx 3070 was running hotter than this 4090 just to put that in perspective third of all noise this card is basically silent during the video editing it's completely silent it makes no noise like i can record videos over here and the pc can be edited here or fully utilized on the gpu you can't really hear it so you don't need to worry about the noise in fact it's got some clever technology where the fans actually stop most of the time the fans are not running and the fans only kick in when it needs to cool the graphics card down or when it gets to a certain limit but it's not an issue at all number four the timeline performance now you might have seen the marketing you know for this 40 series especially this 4090 was that they've got these new av1 encoders for this and you know now you can encode h264 and 5 much faster than before and so on but here's the thing these are encoders not decoders when you're usually editing video on the timeline what you're doing is decoding which means you're playing back video rather than putting the video together and the decoders on the 40 series are exactly the same as on the 30 series and on the timeline playback in terms of video we didn't see any difference at all or at least it didn't come from the encoders there the timeline playback difference actually came from the gpu power and after the vram difference that was the one that made a difference for us but not the encoders so if you're thinking about just getting the graphics card and getting much better timeline performance you know playback then it's not really gonna happen you will get a better timeline performance with loads of effects on and color grade on if you're doing that and the vram you know in our case we saw that but it's not that you can just now suddenly very smoothly edit h265 10-bit 422 footage is just not going to happen it's still going to be the cpu that's going to be playing it back if you're an amd system if you're an intel system and you've got the igpu then obviously that will be playing that footage back but this doesn't really increase or make the timeline performance much better than the 30 series for us so i think it's important for you to know that or not to fall under the like marketing kind of way of what they say about the 40 series so just something to consider number five better rendering times now is this really so much better and rendering and you know putting the videos together the encoders there did you see a massive difference going from rtx 3070 to 4090 it should be a huge difference right was it faster yes it was slightly faster did i notice a massive difference now right now we're not talking about numbers here like okay this was that much and this was that much was it so much better was it that much better but here's the thing if you if you're running 3070 for example you're thinking goodness me i'm gonna get 4090 and my render times are gonna be so much faster then you might not even recognize the like faster rendering times at all in fact i've got a 10900k with an rtx 2060 in here and i think this will render the videos faster than the ryzen 9 3950x with the rtx 4090 because of the intel quick sync over there even if i'm using exactly the same encoders 
just feels like the 10900K does it much faster than the Ryzen system. So here's the thing. I found that actually my render times aren't bottlenecked by the GPU, but the CPU. So if you're thinking about getting better rendering times or exporting times from your video editing, the GPU is not the first thing you should be considering as an upgrade, but the CPU. So my CPU really starts to show its age and it's the CPU that's you know, doing the bottleneck. But very importantly, it also matters which codecs and export settings are you using? Because if you do kind of fall into the, you know, perfect line of the codecs and everything that's supported on the RTX 1490 here, then you will get much faster export times, especially if you're exporting to AV1 or something like that, then this card re just, there's nothing like it. Like this is the fastest card, right? But right now, even us here, we're still exporting to H.264, just like YouTube settings, you know, 4K with 45 megabits per second, a bit rate. So we didn't see a ton of export time differences with this 1490. I'm not saying that this is going to be the difference for everybody, but I'm trying to tell you that you might not see that. And, you know, don't fall into the marketing of yeah, these will be much faster. The real world might not be like that. So really think about which codecs are you exporting into and then see if, if these will line into, you know, what 4090 uh, can support and then you'll see the difference. I was slightly expecting better exporting times or really seeing those encoders at work, but I'm only seeing the encoders doing a little bit here and there, but it's probably just due to my workflow. So in conclusion, after four weeks, probably five weeks now of using this card, and we're still using it there, that's why it's not out there. First of all, before you start upgrading your GPU in your video editing, look at the CPU, because in Premiere Pro specifically, because that's the people I'm talking to here right now, if you're using Premiere Pro, then upgrade your CPU first before you upgrade your GPU because you're gonna see much better performance difference there. Yes, the GPU can accelerate some of the things and so on. And if you've got a really bad GPU bottleneck, yes, you might need to upgrade the GPU to a 40 series or something like that. But first, look at the CPU. If you're using DaVinci Resolve for your video editing, then the difference is actually much bigger. The 4090 is a much better card than a 30 80 or 3070 that we were using, but this is not our workflow. DaVinci Resolve uses much more of the GPU power, can utilize GPU for loads of different things, much more than the Premiere Pro can. Premiere Pro is more CPU bound uh, and DaVinci Resolve is really GPU bound, the better the GPU and you really can utilize the 24 gigabytes of VRAM and all that for DaVinci Resolve. So if you're in DaVinci Resolve, then yeah, it would be much more worth it going from 3070 to 4090. But in Premiere Pro, not so much. But then if you're looking for the 4090, would I recommend this MSI 4090? And I'd say absolutely. I think this is absolutely fine card and you don't need to pay for some of the more premium MSI cards or ASUS cards. If you can find that this out there, I'll leave a link in the description below, then this card is fantastic. No coil wine, quiet, very powerful, efficient, works, high quality. I mean, what else is there to say? I'm loving the MSI RTX 4090 Gaming Trio X. If you've been using 4090 for your video editing workflow, then let me know what your thoughts are in the description below. I would love to hear from you. Let's get some high quality advice going in the comment section below. So go check those comments out there. And if you do want to build yourself, create a PC, then check out the links in the description below. There's the best bank for buck, create a PC. If you don't want to waste any money on your PC and want to get the best performance for your money, there's a PC build in the description below. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.